Hello, the internet. Today I want to talk about humanized organisms and hydra. Now, hydra are tiny aquatic organisms that live in fresh water. Uh, they have little tentacles. They're in the same family of creatures as jellyfish. And they have an interesting property. As far as we can tell, they don't age. They are biologically immortal. So first off, how do we know that hydra are biologically immortal, as it says? So this is down to work by Professor Daniel Martinez, who examined hydra over a, the long term, years in fact, and compared their mortality rate as a function of age. Now typically, creatures are going to have a mortality rate that tracks their body size and the time from when they are born to when they have their first offspring. And in general, the bigger you are and the later you have offspring, the longer your total lifespan. So take orcas, they weigh about a million grams and have their first offspring at 25 years, and they live far longer than a vole, which weighs about 10 grams and has its first offspring within a few weeks of birth, potentially. Hydra weigh in at a fraction of a gram and have their first offspring within a few days after being born, but they're still alive and reproducing for years, thousands of times longer than the trend would predict. So where is the big discrepancy coming from? And some of it is the simplicity of their body organization, but they're not single-celled creatures. They have nerves and they have specialized organs. Uh, they hunt with these poison cells on their tentacles and ingest prey by engulfing it. So they're, they're not totally simple. And yet, if you cut them in half, the two halves will become two hydra. And if you damage them, they will regenerate. And so that opens up the question, could we introduce human genes into a hydra and see if that breaks this process? And if so, can we learn why and how to fix it? So humanized hydra <laughs> sounds like a really scary prospect. Uh, the idea of introducing human genes to a creature that alien. So that put me on a whole different train of thought and wondering if this is gonna end up like some sort of science fiction scenario with uh, tentacle horror monsters. And I had to make a comic about that. I was thinking about humanized hydra and genetically modified hydra, and that made me think of the scenario that would undoubtedly result in any sci-fi story where the creature turns into some terrible monster. You know, maybe it'd get super smart or gigantified. A giant hydra would actually be pretty terrifying. Their arms would have stingers on them full of poison, and they could split along their length to engulf their prey like in that movie with the wet puppets. Despite the scary term, humanized organisms don't actually mean the creature would be human-sized or intelligent or crawl out of the laboratory and require a breach of the Geneva Conventions to subdue. There may not be any humanized hydra, but there are other humanized organisms, and they seem pretty tame. A humanized organism just means that one or more of its genes have been replaced or have had an additional gene with the humanized variant added. That means the creature makes one or more human proteins. So if a scientist is studying some specific protein because it's important to human disease, the results of the study will be more relevant to humans. So I roughed out the original idea in Storyboard that whatever happened to those humanized hydra experiments? The results were inconclusive, but I think that Snowman did a fantastic job. How's a bioengineered hydra experiment going? I was just about to go check on it. The results were inconclusive. I post that and those kinds of things on PeterAllenLab.com occasionally, just as a bit of a hobby or diversion. But I really appreciate uh, the artist Snowman for putting this together for me. I think it turned out great. Human egoist organisms are not actually all that scary. Most of the time, you put a human gene type into a creature and it just dies. It doesn't make much difference. But there have been some really useful uh, outcomes from humanizing organisms. As a for instance, in this last few years, uh, the humanized mouse that displays human ACE2 uh, instead of mouse ACE2, or in addition to mouse ACE2, uh, is susceptible to coronavirus. So it's known that the 
SARS-CoV-2 binds to ACE2 as its receptor on human cells. That allows it to get entry. And so if you make mice that display the same human ACE2, those mice become susceptible where normal mice aren't. So that's an opportunity to test viral infection and different variants and possible treatments. And it's a nice confirmation that ACE2 really is that important uh, to, to the viral infection process. And, and it opens up some interesting hypotheses, like maybe human biodiversity in terms of the expression levels of ACE2 are really important for where the uh, big difference between some people's experiences and others of this disease, right? So some people may be deeply affected because they overexpress ACE2 relative to the general population. Other people might be essentially resistant because of their low expression of ACE2. So confirming that with a humanized mouse is really neat. I don't know why I haven't been able to find any humanized hydra. It might just be that human genes are so different from the you know, very evolutionarily distant hydra that they just don't work. I did read that the genome of hydra is very AT rich as opposed to GC. And so if you do want to express a human protein in hydra, you probably have to redesign the gene to express the same protein using different codons if you remember your high school biology. Uh, that's, that's a challenge, you know, getting that to work. So I guess it's not terribly surprising no one's made it work quite yet. Uh, but I look forward to see it. If anybody uh, should run into a humanized hydra experiment, uh, please do leave that in the comments. I'm super interested. There have been genetic modifications done to hydra. Uh, so this green fluorescent protein labeled hydra exists and is pretty cool looking if I do say so. So anyhow, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for taking a little walk with me here in the cemetery, and I will see you next time.